Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Edith and Hugo from Wildlands by Osprey Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the second episode in this Wildlands painting series. And today we're painting Edith and Hugo, the next two from the Mages Guild. So I've put both Edith and Hugo together for this video because both of them are very simple minis to paint and neither of them have too much time that's gone into them. They don't have one key particular element that was particularly difficult to paint. For both of them the base coating was pretty quick and then the majority of the time went into the highlighting and shading for the robe or the cape whatever that's on their back. And so the main thing that I'm going to talk about for both of them is how I did the highlighting and shading on their capes because while blending was very very important for both of them there was a slight different approach for the shading because for Edith here I used washes initially on her cape to do the shadows and then built up the highlights from there whereas for Hugo his was just purely layering for both highlighting and shading because with Edith's cape the folds and the creases are much smaller and closer together whereas for Hugo he has much more gradual and larger recesses and creases in his and so washes weren't going to be the ideal way to do that so that's going to be the the main focus of what I talk about is just the different approach to highlighting and shading the robes and why there were those differences. So with Edith's colour scheme here I did a bit of a mix between sticking with the artwork and then veering away from it because in her artwork um, her robe here is purple so I've stuck with it there but then her main clothing that she's wearing that I've painted green there in the artwork that's brown but then so is her hat and her boots and the handle part of her broom and so I didn't want there to be too much brown and then really the only interesting looking part to her outfit is the robe and so I went with green just as a way to break the colors up a little bit add an extra visual element and I chose green because even though yellow is opposite purple on the color wheel and therefore the uh, the complementary color for purple green sits beside yellow and so it's pretty close so those are colors that work well together but also green was just a color that I thought would work well for you know a witchy sort of looking character so yes yeah, so I stuck to, to the artwork where I thought I needed to but veered away with that main part of, of her clothing just because I didn't want there to be too much brown um, which would mean that kind of all the different elements are just going to going to get lost a little bit in each other you wouldn't necessarily be able to easily see where her boots were and then where the main part of her clothing was so yeah I just didn't want those details to get lost in with each other and now here I'm just putting a wash down on the main part of her clothing because the recesses here are, are quite close to each other and so I thought um you know, there's no point sort of really building up the shades in, in layers. Just put a wash down, let them flow into all those recesses and that's just going to be easy for the, for the shading. And now you can see that I'm going around and putting washes on all of the different parts and you will note there that I put a purple wash down on her cape. Now that's part of what I'll be talking about when I come to talking about the highlighting and shading there. But I did a wash for the shading on her cape because the recesses and the folds and the creases and whatnot in her cape are uh, quite shallow and close to each other and so I thought a, a wash would be fine there because there's plenty of spots for the the wash to flow into and there were no real large surface areas for the the wash to just kind of sit on and dry in a blotchy way and so that was going to be fine to build up the shadows and then as I come back later with the highlights I can easily blend back into them. So here I'm just building up some really, really simple highlights for the different leather parts. So I painted the hat and the boots 
in ruddy leather as the base coat. Then I put Agrax Earthshade over the top just to flow into the recesses and bring out some of the detailing. And now I've come back to do the highlighting and my first highlight was straight into ruddy leather mixed with leather brown. Now normally when I come back and do a highlight over a spot where I put a wash down, my first highlight is with the base coat. But because the ruddy leather is already quite a dark brown and the Agrax Earthshade wash only did so much um, because they're already kind of close to each other. I didn't really think there was too much point in doing an initial highlight with the ruddy leather and then working up from there. So I went straight to mixing in the leather brown and I just, you know, started at the spots where I thought the light would be hitting and then I just feathered the edges out away from that towards the shadows and then I just gradually mixed in more and more of the leather brown until I had it at the brightness that I wanted and then by that point, you know, still putting it in that exact same spot where the light would be hitting but then just feathering it less and less and less each time. I add a bit more leather brown in and that just helps to build up a, a gradual transition from where the brightest highlight would be through to the shadows um, and it you know keeps smooth blend so that we don't have too much of a defined line between where the the shifts from one tone to another are and then I'm just doing a similar thing here with highlighting the green so I um, used brilliant green as the base coat put the, uh, the green wash down, but because the Brilliant Green isn't a darker green to start with, my first highlight was to go back to the Brilliant Green, just picked out all of the spots where light would be hitting, which was the majority of the, the surfaces and the edges. And now I've shifted to Viper Green, just to do some of those brighter highlights and to bring out some of the detail. Again here, just concentrating at where the uh, light would be hitting and then just gradually feathering out. All right, so now I'm on to the main part for Edith here, and that is the highlighting of the robe. Now, like I said earlier, I used the Twilight Purple, which is my dark purple to base coat with, just stuck to the artwork there. And then I used a purple wash to do the shading. So, you know, my two main ways of, of shading is either using a wash or building the shadows up using layering. And I used a wash here because a lot of the folds and the creases are quite shallow and close to each other and so the the wash had plenty of places to flow into and you know I, I try and avoid washes if I if I have lots of just flat smooth surfaces because the wash tends to um, you know dry in a blotchy way there because it doesn't really have anywhere to, to settle but here it did and so I thought that using washes was the way to go and I can easily, uh, you know, blend the highlights back into those shadows. And then so as the initial highlight, I went back to the Twilight Purple, which is what I used to base coat with. I laid it down on all of the, the ridges, so all of the spots that are going to be the brightest. And then I just washed the bristles, bristles off. I'm a brush licker, so I do that with my mouth. You can just do it by washing it off in your, um, in your water cup. And then with the paint washed out and the bristles wet, I then just feather the edges out. And by feathering those edges out and gradually doing that towards the shadow, it just makes the highlight thinner and thinner and thinner as it gets more and more feathered which means that by the time that feathering gets to the, the deepest part of the shadow, there is no purple, you know, there is no highlight color left anymore. And so it gives a nice gradual fade from the highlight through to the shadow. And then after I built that up over a couple of layers, just to build the opacity, especially right on top of the ridges, I've now started to bring in the amethyst purple, which is my brighter purple. So I started off by just mixing a little bit in and again, just putting that highlight Highlight right where the majority of the light's going to be hitting so right on top of those ridges and then just didn't feather it out as far so then we start to get a transition now from the highlight with the amethyst purple mixed in to then gradually blend towards the the initial highlight which was just the twilight purple which then has a smooth transition out to the shadow which is where the wash was and so i just gradually mixed in more and more amethyst purple but every time i mixed in more amethyst purple i then just didn't feather out as far so that it just kept then slowly blending into the previous highlight which just wasn't as bright and then for the final 
highlight, which had quite a bit of amethyst purple mixed in. I then concentrated the paint just in the upper section, so more sort of around her shoulders, and only bringing it down, you know, maybe halfway down the robe, just so that then the top part of the robe looked brighter than the bottom part. Um, and just by gradually feathering each layer out, regardless of whether it was the first layer with just the twilight purple or the last layer that had lots of the amethyst purple mixed in, gradually feathering each layer out, but less and less and less the brighter it got. And that then meant I could get a smooth blend from one layer to the next, which is really, really important with this sort of highlighting when you do have those gradual sort of folds in a robe, because you don't want to have those really defined lines where one um, you know, part of the sh where one shadow or highlight color meets the next, because in reality it's not going to be like that. You are going to have those subtle shifts in colors, and so yeah, by feathering each edge out, we're able to get that smooth transition from one tone to an to another. But yeah, went with uh, washes for the the shadows here because all of those folds and creases and whatnot are fairly close to each other and they aren't very deep and um, there isn't a huge height difference between the you know the, the peak of a ridge and you know the the bottom part of of one of the creases um, and so washes worked quite well there whereas hugo um, who i paint later on in this video i don't use any washes at all on him certainly not for any part of his cloaks or robes because he has much deeper recesses in his and they and they are much smoother and so yeah um washes don't work weren't going to work as well for him but i'll get to talking about that when i'm done but here's edith finished um really happy with how she came up didn't spend too long on her because she is quite a simple mini but i think the the highlights in her robes there work pretty well and so yeah happy with how she ended up and now we're getting on to hugo So for Hugo's overall colour scheme, I was able to stick pretty closely to the artwork because there isn't too much of one colour that was going to make it hard to read the different details. So I've started here with just Earth Brown, which is kind of a mid-range brown that I've got for his feathers. And I have, I've done this with a mid-range brown because it gives me room to put a wash over the top to do the shading. And then also I can go quite a bit brighter for when I do the highlighting. And now I'm just going into base coating his robe. Now I've used obviously blue there for the majority. And I've base coated with one of my mid-range blues, but this would be, I suppose, just on the darker end of my mid-range blues, I guess. And I did that because I wanted to leave, first of all, like plenty of room to be able to do some shading, so to go darker for that, but then also lots of room to go brighter so that I can push the contrast a bit with the highlighting just to make it really clear where the light's hitting and so that I can have some clearly lighter parts. So if I start with a, a brighter blue I wouldn't be able to go as bright with the highlights or I could but I wouldn't get the same contrast between the shadows and the highlights um, and then I'm just going with the brown here for the cloak and again here because the shadows are going to be so so important for this guy's robes um, to be able to build the contrast I've started with one of my lighter browns so that I can really go darker with the shadows and then that's going to get easily allow me to get some contrast between the highlights on the, the top of each of those ridges and the really, really dark shadows in the bottom of each of those deep recesses, all of those folds in there. Now, the one spot that I did need to veer away from the artwork was just that red section that's just sort of underneath his um, chin there, just kind of going across his chest. And that's because in the artwork, I couldn't actually really see that bit of material that was running across his chest because in his artwork he's got so clearly the the light brown cape but then he, the blue part of his robe it looks like that's the entirety of what's underneath the the brown part of his cloak and that there isn't actually a separate part running across his chest there anyway maybe i was just looking at the artwork wrong but just to me that part that i painted red is an extra layer in the sculpt that isn't actually there in the artwork and so i wanted to pick that out in a in a different color and so i went with red because i thought that was a, going to be a good contrasting color one that's going to stand out but then one that also makes sense in terms of the the overall color scheme and 
the theme. And so that's sort of how I, how I built up each of those different colors for the base coating. All right, so here I'm starting the process to highlight and shade the main part of this robe. And as you can see, I'm just building this up with layers. So with Edith's cape, I used a wash there because the folds and the creases were quite close to each other and were quite shallow. So there were really good spots for the wash to flow into and then I could then blend the highlights back into there. But with the robes here for Hugo, the folds are much further apart and they're a lot more gradual, which means that the wash is more just going to sit on all of the surfaces rather than actually flow into the recesses because I find that washes work best when you have recesses that are really really close to each other and it's just not really going to work here because it's just going to sit on top of all of the ridges and all of the different surfaces and when a wash just sits there I find it dries in a real blotchy way and so layering was going to be the better option here and so what I've done is I've just gone to my deepest deepest blue and heavily thinned it down lots and lots of water has been mixed in here and so what that means is that when I put the paint down because it is so thin each layer doesn't really make too much of a difference to the previous one and so it gives me lots of control over how quickly the shade builds up and it makes it really really easy to feather out the edge of each layer because the paint is so thin and so what I did there is I just laid um, that dark blue down into the bottom of each of those folds and then just clean the brush off like I said earlier I'm a brush licker so I use my mouth for that but you can just wash it off in your water cup and then just feather the edges out away from where I want the deepest part of the shadow to be so just moving away from the deepest part of each of those recesses and just feathering it towards the the peaks of all of the folds and then just worked my way around did that with every single fold and then by the time I came back to that starting point it had dried and then I just put the next layer down but each layer that went down was only the, the actual paint was only put right in the bottom of each of those recesses and then just feathered out away from there but less and less and less each time to give a nice gradual transition from the deepest shadow color that I was building up through to where the highlights were going to be and because I had thinned the paint down so much, it, like I said before, it did give me a lot of control over how quickly I built the shadows up. And so over, I don't know, three or four layers, I suppose, I was able to get that really deep shadow right at the bottom of each of those recesses. Um, but then that nice smooth transition up to where I was going to be putting the highlights, which is what I'm doing now. And I did move to a blue that was quite a bit brighter than, certainly than the shadows. And I think a good thing to remember with acrylic paints is that as they dry, they desaturate. And so what will happen is you can put a paint down and it will look a certain brightness, but then as it dries, it will essentially look darker after it's dried. And so with the blue that I put down for the highlights, I went to one that when it was wet, looked too bright, but then by the time it dried, it was, it was looking right. And so I basically did the reverse with the highlighting so again heavily thinned the blue down that i was using for the highlights but then i put it where the light was going to be hitting the most so you know the tops of each of those ridges and then i just feathered the edges out towards the shadows and in exactly the same way that i did with the shadows just each time i did another layer so i you know i did each of the ridges in exactly the same way so i put the the light blue down feathered the edges towards the shadows, worked my way around doing that for all of them. Then when I came back to the first one, it had already dried, so then I just put the next layer down, but I put the paint down in the exact same spot right on top of the ridge where I wanted it to be its most you know, opaque and where I wanted it to look like the light was hitting the most. And, but then just feathered a little bit less for each layer. And so that just builds up that nice gradual transition from one tone to the next. And so we try and as much as possible avoid having those defined lines between one tone and the next. And so I just kept um, building up more and more layers until I had the brightness at the level that, I, the, sorry, the level that I wanted it to. I didn't mix in any lighter blues or any white or anything like that. I just literally built up the highlights through more and more layers. And so the more opaque it got, so the less see-through the paint was, 
the brighter red appeared and yeah so that would have been i suppose with the shadows probably another three or four layers i guess and by the time i was doing the final layer i was almost doing no feathering at all just putting the light down sorry the paint right on top of the ridge where the light would be hitting the most and then pretty much not feathering at all and so now I'm into doing his robe here and, or his cape, sorry. And this is done in the exact same way that I did the rest of his robe all through layering, because again, those, all of those recesses, they aren't real close to each other. And so the wash isn't really just gonna flow and settle into them. And because the folds are so gradual, there's really nice gradual curves. There's lots of just smooth surfaces that the wash is just going to sit on. It's not really going to flow off them. And again, like I was saying earlier, I find that if washes are just left to sit on surfaces, it's if you have even the slightest inconsistency in thickness, it's going to dry in a real blotchy way. And that's just going to ruin the, the smoothness the smoothness, sorry, that I'm going for. And so again, layering was the way to go here. And so you can see from the colors, I've just mixed some earth brown into the leather brown. So the leather brown is the, the base coat color that I use, that lighter brown. And so I've just taken that and mixed some earth brown in, which is one of my mid-range browns. It's not too dark. And I've just started to so thin that down, lots and lots of water again, so that each layer doesn't make too much of a difference. And I'm just concentrating that into the deepest part of each of the folds and then just feathering each of those edges out towards where the highlights are going to be. I built that up over a few layers and now you can see I've just gone to some straight earth brown and this is going in just where the deeper shadows would be. So this doesn't go into every shadow, just where the deeper shadows would be just to darken it even further so that then as the highlights go down it builds that contrast even more between the brightest highlight and the deepest shadow and so by keeping the deepest part of the shadow to the earth brown which was mixed into the leather brown for the initial part of the shading it makes it easier to keep those transitions nice and smooth because I'm mixing just earth brown into an earth brown and leather brown mix, if, if that makes sense. And so, yeah, I just kept that to the deepest part of the recesses and then just feathered only a little bit because I wanted to really have um, the, the effect that there's a super dark shadow right down the bottom there, but then it transitions fairly quickly out from there into, you know, the lighter part of the shadows. And so now I'm getting into doing the highlighting now. And so I've gone back to the leather brown, which was the base coating color, and I mixed in some skeleton bone just to lighten it off. Now I've mixed in skeleton bone rather than white because skeleton bone is an off-white color. And I just thought that that mix with the brown would work a bit better because the skeleton bone is closer to brown than what white is. And so here I've only got a bit of the skeleton bone mixed in, just starting with not too much of a dramatic jump into the, into the highlights. But again, thin down, concentrating it on where I want the brightest part of the highlight to be, and then just feathering out from there towards the shadows. And so, you know, the, the first layer that went down, I feathered these, those edges out quite a bit so that then I end up with a nice subtle shift from the highlight through to the base coat, which then has that nice subtle shift through to the shadows. And then so for each layer, I just gradually mix in a little bit more of the skeleton bone just to gradually lighten the, the highlight color. And then again, just feather less and less and less as more and more of the skeleton bone is mixed in just to give that nice subtle transition. And also what I'm doing here is as it gets lighter, I'm concentrating the paint more and more to the upper parts of of the cape and so I'm trying to keep it more to um, like the tops of his shoulders and then just bringing it part way down the back rather than going all the way down to the bottom of the cape for every highlight because even though the ridges are going to be getting more um, you know are going to be brighter than the shadows even the highlights aren't going to be consistent because the upper parts of the cape are going to get more um, light than the bottom parts and 
And so there's not only feathering happening in the direction of the highlight through to the shadow, there's also feathering happening in the direction from top to bottom for each of the ridges of the cape, just to make sure that there's the overall impression that the upper sections are getting more light than the lower parts. And so now just some super, super basic highlighting for his feathers. So the initial highlight just started with the earth brown, which was the base coat, just to bring it back up to that after the wash went down. And now just mixing in some leather brown just to start to pick out some of the um, the feathers that are sticking out a little bit more just to bring the detail out and just every layer just has a bit more leather brown mixed in. Alright so there's now just a couple of details to finish off Hugo so just to finish off the feathers and then do his eyes and beak and basin so with those last couple of bits done both Edith and Hugo are finished. So I was really, really happy with how both of them came up, especially when you look at them from the distance that we will be when playing the game. All of those folds are really easy to see, and that's good because there's some really, really nice detailing in these sculpts. I've been really, really impressed. But like I said through the video, I had different approaches for doing the shading for Edith to Hugo. So for Edith, because the recesses in her robes weren't quite as deep as what Hugo's are, and they were a lot closer together, washes were the way to go there because there were lots of spots for the wash to flow into. But for Hugo, his folds are much more gradual and further apart, and so layering was the way to go there just to gradually build them up and make sure I had those nice smooth transitions, but really, really happy. So thank you very much for checking out another one of my videos. I hope you got something out of it that you can use in your own painting, or at the very least, you just enjoyed watching. Please do give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, and please hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with these videos as they keep coming out, and stop by the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts for this channel. So with all that being said, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.